So for as long as I've known, I've always been afraid of people leaving me or people losing the same connection that I have with them or basically losing friendships, losing family relationships, anything. I still remember at my sweet 16, I was giving a speech and I was just like so happy that everyone, my entire family was there. I didn't even care that it was a party, it was just that everyone was there. And always, I'd always tell my mom like, why? why can't everyone just be there with me all the time and i don't know i have nothing that i could like say that happened in my childhood that makes me think like oh someone's gonna leave me but i just had this intense deep fear that someone is gonna leave me and i just i couldn't deal with change i think and also at a young age i never had anyone pass away like i've been blessed with living with all four of my grandparents i've been blessed with like both parents in my house, two siblings. I haven't had anyone pass away, but it was still an intense fear. And the first time that someone close to me passed away was almost two years ago now. And she was like my second mom. She was my mom's best friend. Her daughter was my best friend. We were all childhood friends, everything like, we knew she was battling cancer for eight years, but no one, because of her uplifting attitude, her kindness, her compassion, we kind of, I think we ignored it for a while until we, she got really, really sick. And I remember I was in school here and my another friend in our group said, Asna, you need to come home because they're not telling you the truth, but it's any matter, you need to come home. And I'm so glad she did because my mom was not telling me to come. And I came, I saw her in the hospital, and she didn't recognize me, she didn't see me, but I saw her, and I was so glad I did. And the next day, she passed away, there was a funeral. The day after, I came back home. I came back to San Diego and I had a midterm the day after. I was, I couldn't stay in my room because I didn't know what to do. I couldn't call my mom because I didn't want to hear what was happening back home. I didn't know what to do. I was very confused because it's the first time that someone close to me passed away and I just didn't know how to comprehend that. And I just like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna take my midterm, keep going. People pass away, I'm gonna deal with this. Um, I didn't even know how to talk to my best friend because it was her mom and I had to be there for her. So I ignored whatever I was feeling because I went to talk to my mom. How are you doing? Your best friend passed away. How are you doing? Your mom passed away. I never got a chance to think, oh my God, I just lost someone close to me. Someone who was like a second mom to me, someone who cared for me, someone who I could tell anything to. And then I just, was still really upset, really sad. I would cry every day over nothing. Just, I would just cry. But I was like, it's okay, normal. And then I took an appointment with CAPS on during my finals week because I'm like, I just wanna talk to someone. I never got closure because I never got to stay home when everyone was dealing with it. I came back here, jumped into a, my life again and it felt like I was disconnected from what was going on at home. And so I talked to someone and I realized I was really, really taking this hard. And I didn't know why I was taking this hard because people at home were still moving on. They still did the funeral. They still did the final rites. And I was still struggling. I realized that this is taking too long. This has been two months now and I am not getting better. And I'm a psychology major. So I've taken a billion classes. I know about depression. I know about all the mental illnesses, but I never expected anything to happen to me or you know, I just never expected that I would have to go through it and learn firsthand what I'm trying to preach, what I've been met talking about so openly about mental health that I would have to deal with it. And when I, it kind of hit me that, okay, I am not getting better. This is a spiral. Every single day I'm crying. I'm walking to class like a robot. I'm going to work like a robot. It was a cycle every single day. I come home, I'm sitting in my room just studying. No, I, there was no one in my apartment, right? And especially when it just, it wasn't a great experience. That whole summer was me alone. Then the school year started and that's when I finally knew come November or end of October that this has been six months now. I'm definitely going through something and I'm definitely cannot, someone shouldn't be crying every day. I've been a naturally really happy person, really 
I don't know, I guess, upbeat, hyper. And when I realized that I would go hang out with my friends and I was hyper and upbeat, and when I came back home, I would cry every night, that's not okay. And it took me a long time to realize that that's not me and I shouldn't be doing this. Or not shouldn't be, but I need to figure out why I'm doing this. So I decided the first step would be to get access to um, psychological services on campus. And I made an appointment, a phone interview, talked to someone, met a great person. She, I literally was with her for an entire year from November of junior year to November of senior year, which and I'm in my senior year now. And she honestly, it, it was great, but also I would only get to go to her every two weeks. So, so many things would build up and it would be really hard for me to get advice from her when all I'm doing is telling her what's going on, you know? But it was nice to tell someone who didn't know about my life, who didn't, who'd had no biases, no judgment, and just explain like, I'm still grieving. Now, adding on to that, I'm being anxious about my friendships, about my relationships, about any of my interpersonal relationships. I was fighting with my family for no reason. I would go home, I still remember. I went home for a party, like a family party, and I was doing games, having fun with everyone, and someone made fun of me. It's fine, like for me, I would laugh it off, whatever, that's hilarious. Or if I'm getting mad, I would sit, like, I would, it would be fine. Two minutes later, it would be fine. But that day I walked upstairs and I was in the bathroom and I just started crying. My dad knew something was wrong. He came up and I'm like, dad, I think I'm depressed. This has been going on for too long. And I think the week after I got my first appointment, after that moment where I was like, I'm with all of my family and I'm not happy, you know? Like family's the only thing that would have made me happy and I wasn't happy. Education was fine, classes were fine, work was fine, but I wasn't able to control any of my interpersonal relationships around me. And that's when I, really felt helpless I guess really felt like I don't know and I remember fighting with my roommate fighting over stupid things but I just couldn't control it because I was just angry all the time I don't know if I was angry at my roommate angry at my boyfriend angry at the doctors who couldn't figure out what was going on with me because there was also another medical issue that I couldn't figure out I was just angry and so instead of getting instead of being like let me figure out what's going on I would just getting in arguments and getting in, I don't know, and then the arguments led to having panic attacks. Going through every day, just feeling sorry for myself that I wasn't getting better because now it had been almost eight months and I was like, how am I still grieving over a loss? I mean, yes, it's fine to think about it, but how am I not getting better? And it was really hard on me because I wasn't being nice to myself, I guess. And I remember one of my therapists told me like, you need to be nicer to yourself. You need to be kinder to yourself because every time I do something wrong, I will sit in bed the next day for hours because I didn't want to get up and face what I did. I would just sleep, sleeping for hours because I didn't want to face what was going on, face talking to my mom about what I did the day before, talking to my best friend about what happened and what should we do now. I would just sleep and that was a really bad coping mechanism because it wasn't healthy. Maybe I think it was, I think nine months after my aunt passed away, I was like, okay, I need to do something. Like the first step was ex realizing that the only way this can change is if I, if I accept that I need to do something. People can't change their actions. People can't change their words. It has to be me and it has to be how I think of what other people are saying to me. I have to like basically me, right? Because like a huge thing that came to me is like, like, I think I had to start being a little bit selfish in a way, not in the mean way, but in the way where I need to start doing things for myself and not considering what my friends are doing when that wasn't impacting me bene like positively. I started exercising, I started going to dance classes. I started, I took a burlesque class. It was, I think the highlight of my week. One hour a week, I just felt so great. I was like, this is so much fun. I think I can get better now because I've been exercising. I took like a, there was like a free exercise course that UCSD had, I took it. I was like, I'm gonna do this because my psychiatrist gave me a voucher and he was like, you need to start working out. You need to, because 
Exercise is a natural way to release the release endorphins and help the dopamine in your body because depression is when um, like basically all the neurotransmitters are off, right? So exercise is a natural way besides uh, medication to deal with things like this. And I wasn't before when I was like feeling bad for myself, I didn't think like I can do anything to help me. But then when I like hit me, I need to figure things out and I want to get better. The When I realized that I wanted to get better, not for anyone else, but for myself, that's when I was able to make these changes. When I was able to start working out, start meditating, um, watching my diet because healthy, I just wanted to be healthy because I was eating like shit because I just kept eating chips when I felt bad. But that's not good, you know? Yes, chips are fine if you want to treat yourself, but not every day when you're just like, oh, I just want to eat chips. And then um, started going through a breakup. So that kind of, it's like when I was going back uphill, it set me all the way downhill because I never got over my depression. It was only like, I was maintaining it, right? I was maintaining the anxiety. I was maintaining the dep like my moods. But after that moment, I think it was mid-March, I lost it completely. Um, I couldn't step out of the house without calling my mom. I called her at least five to 10 times a day, not because I wanted to talk to her, not because I wanted to ask her how she's doing, but just so I had someone to talk to so I wouldn't be ruminating my own thoughts or crying. Cause class was fine, studying was fine, but if I was ever walking alone, I felt like I just didn't feel safe with my own thoughts. I didn't feel safe, that, that's the biggest word. I didn't feel safe with myself. And it's really hard going through things or keep going when you don't feel safe with yourself. It's like, who do you go to now, right? Like, how can you love anyone else? How can you maintain a relationship with friends, family, significant others when you don't love yourself? And at this point, I was still going to therapy. So that was really helping. And at some, some therapy appointments, I felt great. I would like, oh my God, I'm fine now. Two weeks later, I was like, wow, like this is a shitty feeling. Like I am back in the beginning, you know, or even worse. I think that time I was even worse than when I started after my, because it felt like my aunt left, but she passed away, she's gone. Now someone else left me and then another friend left me. I just felt like so many things were changing in my life and I had no control over these things. I can't control any of this. I can only control my own actions. So once I started losing control, I was, it was just, I don't know. It was a spiral. It was a downward spiral. So for me, since I wasn't exercising and since I wasn't really dealing with it, I just, it took me a year, but to finally accept that I should try medication. And I know like people are very hesitant about medicine and everything, especially for mental illness. Um, but honestly, I think it helped me. Maybe, I don't even know if it fully worked, but it kept me thinking, okay, you know what? I'm on medication, I can do better. Like I am getting help, so I can do better. Like I should be able to do better. It was kind of like also psychologically thinking, if I'm taking this now, this should be a good placebo effect also. I'm like, maybe it was helping me, but also I was like, no, like this should be a good day. So therapy is like someone who doesn't know you and who won't judge you because this is their job, I guess. But you can say everything in one time. I remember I said the weirdest things and my therapist would just smile at me, but she would let me because I wanted to get, because everything that bothered me, I would be able to tell her, right? Like if my mom bothered me, I can't tell my mom that you bothered me. If my sister bothered me, I can't tell her, right? But now at this point I can tell everything to one person and she can figure out like, okay, what do you want to do next, you know? and started working on myself basically when I was like okay when I'm having these triggering thoughts so I had to delete social media I had to take I had to do those first steps because it was like exposure therapy like to every day I can't just keep looking at it and like feeling sorry for myself and like going through a spiral right so I had to take those first steps delete Instagram and delete Twitter um, I think I deactivated Facebook on and off for a while but I needed it um, but then I was just really I was just with family but I was still taking medicine and then I was getting better. I was still, it was like, I don't know, depression's a weird thing where I really wish I get 100% better, 
but if at one point if I was 80% better, I would be back to 20% the week after because it's like a roller coaster and I it would be like the weirdest thing. Maybe just someone said something and it would hit me or something else happened at home and it would hit me and it was I just couldn't control that. And still like even now, like I know three weeks ago I had a really bad like it was felt like it was rock bottom this year, you know, and I thought I was doing great this year, but it's still going up and down. All I can do is realize that it will get better and like all of this all of these people leaving me all of this people passing away like it's all a part of life right but now that it happened to me i can learn from it i am can take my past struggles and take them into the my field of what i want to do and how to use that to inspire people like I also started writing. I think that's a huge thing. Um, writing is a great thing for people just wanting to journal their thoughts out, maybe writing letters to yourself, writing letters to other people. Don't send them. Sometimes I sent them, shouldn't have done that. But don't send them, but write them to yourself. And I would just like, I would be like, sometimes I wouldn't say dear diary, but like, dear Asna, what are you doing? Don't you, like, you wanna get better. Let's do this, this, this. Um, or the next day I'd be like, dear mom, thank you so much for helping me just being appreciative of the people that have been supporting me and also realizing that we're all human and like we make mistakes like I know I made a lot of mistakes during my time to heal because I didn't emotionally I didn't take things well obviously writing was great um I started writing blog posts um and that was the first time where like I would talk about mental health, but since after I dealt with it, I was able to actually talk to people about it. And it was, I got a really positive response because not because people are like, oh, like, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't want that response, but I mean, obviously people will read it and reach out to me. But the response I got were, hey, like, thank you so much. I've been feeling this way too. Like, I'm like, I have a friend who reads it every day and she's like, I, if you can do this, I can do this too. Feeling like you're not alone. I think that helped the most. Do people reach out? people reaching out and they're like, wow, like, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that. Um, how did you get better? And sometimes that time I wasn't even completely better. So I was like, okay, like I can't give you perfect advice. I would start crying when I tried to give advice. Now I can give advice, not completely crying, but like still give advice with my own experiences and I've helped and helping people like friends and also strangers that are reaching out that I wasn't even close to, it made me feel like, okay, me telling my story helped someone, you know? It was, it took a lot because this is such, there's such a stigma around mental health. There's such a stigma around depression, anxiety about, especially for someone who's in college, who wants to do something. But when people realize that you're not alone and everyone is dealing with this, they feel better and they want to get better. And it just helps like, like it just helps talking to other people about what you're going through to know that if you can do it together. Um, and also about the aspect of letting people leave, like being okay with change, being okay, accepting that friends change, relationship, relationships change, family lives change, people will pass away. I know like I have to be ready for my grandparents. I have to be ready for all of that. Look at things in the future and be like, okay, like I can do this. So like there was this one quote that really resonates with me because it was something that really, really impacts me. And it's, everyone is there for either a reason, a season or a lifetime. And once you accept that, then you can keep going. The only thing that helps me is looking at the future and looking that I do have a future. I do want to get better. I do want to do well in school. I do want to be a doctor. I think for everyone, make sure you think about the future because you have so much out there then one person or one experience or one situation that's causing you so much pain now that doesn't define your entire life you've lived so much without them or so much without any of this but 